What's going on everybody? Gunner here. Today we're Riverside, but before I jump in and get my feet wet, uh, I'm going to take the time to film three new videos for you guys. And they're small flies, super easy to tie. They, they use nothing except for a pheasant skin and some pheasant tail. That's it. Um, and the reason why is, well, I, I got a new four weight. <laughs> I want to fish uh, some really nice kind of finesse buggy suggestive streamers and, and we're going to tie up a little bugger jig using pheasant we're going to tie up a mini uh, feather craw and then we're going to tie up a bob popovic semperfly miniature version on a little jig hook so this is for the four weight chronicles hope you guys dig it check it out so this right here is the bugger jig and this thing is just ridiculously fishy it's got some pheasant tail coming off the back a little bit of pheasant marabou to extend the body and then it's just a marabou shaft, palmered up and then counter ribbed with your thread. And then two turns, or one turn of two hackles, a pheasant rump to get a nice picky modeled leg section. The bead actually has a head profile in the water, but you can also use it in like copper for more of a suggestive reactionary little hotspot thing. And it's tied on a size 4 jig hook. So check it out. So this is an A-Rex size 4 90 degree jig hook. It's a 5 32nd inch uh, faceted slotted tungsten bead. Now this bead can run up and crowd the hook eye like so if you're not careful. It'll just kind of like run up there. Now what's weird is it doesn't do it every time. So it has to be like, you know, the tolerances of both the hook and the bead line up just right so it does that. So what I like to do is I'll flip this up on its side so my thread doesn't do anything weird. Start your thread. Run that bead up and around and then get your thread behind it. And now I can basically tie that bead in place so that it sits perfectly on my 90 degree bend without it doing anything weird and running up and crowding my hook eye. And then I'm just gonna throw down some thread here. So I'm gonna come in with some pheasant tail first. Really nice, modeled, and, and the thing that I like about the pheasant tail versus using like a, I don't know, some long stems or fibers off the pheasant skin is that the tail fibers are nice and stiff. And this is going to be about two shank lengths, and you can make it as long or as short, kind of depending on your what you're trying to imitate. And I'm going to talk about what this imitates here at the end because, well, I got a little spiel for you. So save my nonsense for the end here. So this here is a pheasant skin. The next step is going to be to tie in some pheasant marabou. And you can find it, if you go right to the end of the rump and then flip your hide over, right here around the butt section, there's going to be some nice marabou pieces. I'm going to take two of them, and the first one is used to extend the body. Now the reason why my thread's right here at the back is because I'm going to catch this with, say, like three turns. Flip that up, run my thread forward to about halfway, and then I'm just going to walk that shaft up. And literally just kind of like fill up my hook shank here. Palmer that literally however you have to. And then tie that off. The reason I suggested two feathers is because you're not going to make it with just one. Then I'm going to take the second piece, I'm going to tie it in by the tip just to get it on the hook. And then take those tips, it's going to be messy, but you can just kind of like lash them down because it doesn't matter. We want this to be picky, it's supposed to be picky and buggy, that's the whole point. And then get that all the way up there, right up to the bead. Now because I'm tying with monofilament thread, I'm quite literally just going to rib this fly. I'm going to rib those marabou stems with my thread. You can see I have a super picky, buggy body, and it's just the marabou shaft going all the way up. It's really simple. Now I'm going to take about a medium length rump feather and a short rump feather. And this right here is your rump, this big section right here. So if that's your bird, that's your neck, shoulders coming down the back, those are the rump feathers right here. And I'm going to put the small one right on top of the medium one. I'm going to preen those back and tie them in right here by the tips. And then I'm only going to take one turn, but I'm taking that one turn with two feathers. I'm going to 
come and cut those tips out. And then you can come and just kind of pull those hackles off to either side and you'll get a really nice wide buggy profile. And then I'm going to hit that with some head cement here. Ooh, that was a brown headed cowbird. Conkly? Something like that. I don't know what they sound like. I just know what it was. That right there. Brown headed cowbird. was a brand new bottle of super glue and she was a little aggressive a little too eager to start gluing stuff make sure your hook eye is nice and clear but that right there is your bug super simple pheasant tail pheasant marabou two rump feathers and I tied the exact same pattern using the hen pheasant skin for just a different color combo a nice lighter bodied version so the reason why a little bugger jig like this is just ridiculously effective it's not that it imitates necessarily anything, but that it imitates quite literally a little bit of everything. And that's <laughs> the fun thing about fishing it, is that subtle jig is kind of like a crayfish, and those long pheasant rump tails are kind of like antennas, and that little marabou can, can kind of be like the, the horn or maybe some claws, and the silhouette is actually pretty close to like a burrowing mayfly. You got that long tail, you got a nice thick abdomen of marabou coming off the back, you got that kind of counter ribbed body, and then you got these long picky legs because they got some beefy legs. But at the same time, that bulbous head and wide shoulder profile from the hackles, it, it looks a lot like a dragonfly nymph. And it's like the same color and size as the little tannic bait fish that are running around here. And I'm not saying it's a bait fish pattern, but what you have to understand about fish is a lot of times they're going to see what they want to see. And that's what being a, a suggestive fly is all about. It's not like you know they're looking for size 18 blue wing olives and you have to fish a size 18 blue wing olive that's not what it's like all the time that's what it's like when trout are being selective during hatch but like here when i'm fishing for smallmouth there's bait fish and crawfish and dragonfly nymphs and helgramites and we got big burrowing mayflies and we actually have nocturnal stones that are massive about this size and a lot of the rapids and this fly it imitates all of them and so under the right circumstances, it's just like a searching pattern. And you actually cast it out and just like tug it and strip it. You can make it flee like a crayfish. You can swim it around like a little bait fish pattern. You can literally dredge it and kind of just pop it over rocks because it rides hook up. As long as you don't get that bead stuck in a rock, you're good to go. That's so, right. And, and you can just kind of let it like move around on the rocks like a, I don't know, <laughs> like a stone fly crawling around. And you can dead drift it under a bobber. You can literally strip it. Uh, it's versatile action wise and it imitates everything suggestively so it's a really fun fly just to catch as many fish on as you can and that's just kind of it like I watched 39 hours season 2 which if you've never seen 39 hours it's like the greatest fl uh, fishing show not fly fishing but flip fishing show on YouTube and it's a multi-species show and a lot of times I get really hyper focused on streamer fishing and and when I watched that show, I was like, man, I want to just stick some bluegills and some crappie and maybe some white bass or a carp and a largemouth. And it's like a lot of times a little bugger jig like this, suggestive little flies like this, they catch everything. And that's the fun thing about fishing. You put this thing on a four weight and you just go fishing and you see what eats it. I have all this stuff on my website, all the materials, the skins, the hooks, the beads, everything you need to tie up this pattern and the other ones. Um, but check it out if you want to tie some up um, and yeah get out on the water and stick some fish see ya